My career journey is pretty different to most. Straight after school, I went and worked at a fund management company. And if I'd stayed there for just 10 years, I would have had a multiple six figure salary and my whole entire path laid out ahead of me. <laughs> but I decided to go a different route because I was unhappy, I was miserable, and I was showing up at work every single day wanting to cry. I even started getting tension headaches and my vision was going blurry because I was so exhausted and stressed and frustrated and ultimately burnt out. And so in this video, I'm gonna share my story of how I went from that to then becoming a fitness coach, to then ultimately now having a multiple seven figure business with the aims of becoming a billionaire. And so that's what's going down. We got the whiteboard out, so let's get straight into it. Cheers. Everything has changed in my business when I look at it now versus even just 12 months ago. And here today, I want to break down for you all the changes that have allowed me to get my time back, to see a massive growth in revenue and profit, and also hire an incredible team that allow me to scale in ways that I did not see possible even just a year ago. If you find any of this insightful, I would love for you to just share it with a friend or just send me a DM letting me know which part was helpful. I'm gonna be pretty much revealing everything as to how our company operates inside of this. And so I'm looking forward to hearing how you find it. So first of all, before diving into that, I think it's really important to recap how I got here. Okay, because I started out my career, as it were, not to mention when I was washing dishes in a pub and when I got fired from being a waitress because I wasn't passionate enough, but I started my career at age 18 working in asset management. And this is a really important part to my story because it showed me what I didn't want in life. And so through working in that job, <laughs> I would show up and do the same mundane, meticulous, monotonous tasks every single day. And it killed me and it made me realize that I wanted freedom and fulfillment in my life. And so while I was working there, I had a real interest in fitness. And so due to my interest in fitness, I watched fitness YouTubers and I saw them on social media and I saw they did this thing called online coaching. And these people knew way less than me about fitness. I mean, when I say I'm a nerd, like I am a super nerd. And so if I'm learning about a topic, I'm gonna learn everything. And so I knew things that were way more advanced than just a regular everyday personal trainer would need to know. And I was obsessed. I was truly, truly obsessed. And so I thought, well, if they can do it, so can I. <laughs> and so I made the decision because I didn't have anyone who I was relying on. I was still living with my parents at the time before they then ended up getting divorced, but I'll touch upon that in a minute. Because of that, I just thought, well, I'm gonna go for it. And so I ended up working at that job for months longer than I wanted to, because there was this whole talk about the fact that we were gonna get a bonus. And I was really money motivated back then, because I was 18 years old, working around all these people who are multi multi-millionaires, and I wanted to create the same thing for myself. So I ended up getting my bonus. It was around 2,000 pounds, which was around like three and a half thousand dollars back then. And handed in my notice the next day. And so I ended up leaving that job on April Fool's Day, and no, it was not a fool. The job itself was a fool, <laughs> but for real though. So I left that. And then I thought that I needed to get a personal training qualification to become an online PT. So I spent a bunch of money, like over a grand on, for me at the time, that was, you know, a lot of money on getting this course. And nothing from the PT qualification helped me because I wanted to build an online business and the skills that you need for in-person PT and online are way different. Not to mention the fact that people pass personal training qualifications without any knowledge. The guy that I was partnered up with didn't even know how to lunge. And later on I found out that the reason why PT qualifications are a thing are so that gym owners can get insurance for their employees to prove that they obviously know what they're talking about. It's all, it, the education system there and in schools is, is broken, but that's another topic for another day. Anyways, so then what ended up happening was I was getting clients and I was doing really, really well. And then my fitness brand was growing and growing and companies like Gymshark started to spot me, so they sponsored me. And then 
basically what happened was loads of people that were working with Gymshark at the time all got dropped in one go. And so when everybody got dropped, they lost a huge chunk of their income. And my friends would see me still traveling and still able to be buying things and having my normal kind of lifestyle and they were wondering, hey Lauren, how are you doing this? And so I told them, well, I'm online coaching. That's what I'm doing and you know, you guys should do it too. And so at the same time, I was selling eBooks, but I found that even though I was selling thousands and thousands of these eBooks, my most enjoyable thing to do was actually the coaching and I'd kind of let that go a bit because I got a bit big headed because of all the Gymshark stuff because I was like I'm an influencer I don't need to do online coaching I can just have passive income how wrong I was because I started selling these ebooks and I wasn't feeling the fulfillment through what I was doing so I started getting complacent yada 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 anyways my friends who also got dropped they asked me for help and so I helped them set up online coaching companies and then they would just talk about it on their stories like I'm studying online coaching, here's what you can get from working with me and then they would tag me saying oh and anyone who's else, who else has been dropped guys go chat to Lauren and so I started getting a bunch of people send me messages because they were like well you're helping this guy, you're helping this girl, can you help me too? And these people were just like everyday personal trainers, they didn't have a big brand or a following, they weren't influencers. And so I was like, huh, this is really really interesting. And by the way, the reason why this whole recap is going to be relevant is because it's going to come a lot into the before versus the now that I'm going to be going into in my next YouTube video, so make sure that you've hit subscribe. And so I had an aha moment and I basically started a course on personal branding, how to grow your personal brand, how to monetize your personal brand, because that's what I thought that these people wanted. And so people were buying it and it was doing well. It was a course for 997 and yeah, it was great. But then I noticed that all of my clients, my customers who were purchasing it, they were all investing in this program because they wanted to grow their coaching companies. And so that triggered a huge light bulb moment for me because I realized that I should help fitness coaches grow their business. I'd already done it for these influencers, so why not do it for anyone who wants an online coaching company in the fitness industry? And so I had this personal branding course and then this course which would help people grow their fitness coaching businesses as an online business. And the problem was that people were so confused about which program to join. They wanted to build a personal brand and they also wanted to grow their fitness coaching business but they didn't want to buy both of them. And simultaneously these courses had quite a lot of overlap as well. Not only that but I had people who wanted to do the online coaching course but they weren't fitness coaches so they didn't want to join and even when I told them yeah it doesn't matter you you don't need to be a fitness coach this stuff applies to any coaches they kind of just didn't like the idea of that because it felt like they'd be a black sheep and so I decided to take on all this feedback and combine the two and so I had a course on how to grow an online coaching business and at the same time I was dabbling with some high ticket mentorship stuff with influencers still and so I was like, okay, this is great, people were buying it, people were loving it, but I would go into the back end of their portal and see that they'd only completed like 33% of the course. And so I was like, well, if people are only completing one third of the course, that means that they're only getting one third of the result and I'm only making one third of the impact that I want to be making. So I then realized, well, I'm teaching them how to build high ticket coaching companies, but I'm not actually doing high ticket and I truly believe in teaching what you do because if you're teaching something else then why you know why are you not doing it because surely the thing that you teach is what gets the best results you know what I'm saying it's like those people that run Facebook ads and they start advertising all over YouTube I mean it just doesn't make much sense unless they've literally maximized their Facebook ads and whatever that's another topic but I was like, okay, this is this is great. What I can start doing is teaching what I do, doing high ticket, because when people pay, they pay attention. And then I'll be able to bring in the best clients, I won't have some of these tire kickers, and I ironed everything out and built a team, and that's how we are where we're at now. Multiple seven figure run rate and super, super satisfied and fulfilled by everything that we're doing. But the moral of the story is that 
I adapted, I changed, and I took on what the market wanted. And that's so important. I mean, what we're doing now works. I love it, it's fulfilling, it's rewarding, and it's generating great results for ourselves and our clients. But, you know, as my vision changes and as the, what the market wants and changes, then our business will adapt too. And so I think so often you can get so caught up on in the, in the now, right? Where your, 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 your current state, that you can't see the future clearly enough and the future that you may be seeing, it may be a great idea, but it may not be what people want and what people need. And so, you know, this is just the product side of how the business has changed. If I was to speak about all of my freebies and lead generation magnets and all of my stuff when it comes to the sales side, we would literally be here all day. But I overcomplicated things for so long. In this before state, everything was overcomplicated, and it was particularly due to one team member. And this particular team member I actually fired when I made that initial switch from courses to high ticket. But they seemed like they changed. And kind of like going back to an ex, I ended up rehiring him around eight to nine months later because I thought he seemed like he had changed, right? And so, look. That was a huge lesson telling me, Lauren, don't get back with your ex, they never change. <laughs> so anyway, I wanna look at the before versus the now so that I can help you not make the mistakes that I made for so, so long, for so long. And I'll probably be able to record this video again in another year because guess what? Things change, business changes, and that's why I'm really, really excited by this. So the moral of the story is that adaptation is everything. What you're doing right now probably isn't gonna be what you're doing in five years time. And that's the beauty about it. I started out being a solopreneur, doing everything by myself. Now I'm a leader and that's pretty much what I'm spending all day doing. Leading my team, coaching my team, empowering them to get better, be better, sharper, and all of that. I never saw my life going this way and so I had this vision for so long that I was going to be the CEO of a massive wealth management company that was publicly traded. That's what I thought I was going to do. And if I'd have been so attached to that vision, I would have lost myself in the process of getting there. Because I did for a period of time. When I came home from my job in investment management, my parents would say to me, you are not the Lauren that we used to know. And so if I'd have had that one vision and not allowed my the way that I felt and oh my gosh if I have just stayed true to that one vision that I had at the beginning for so many years I would still be so unhappy right now and I truly believe that if you're feeling like something is terrible like you hate it like it's draining your energy whether it's in a relationship whether it's in work and business whether it's in you know when it comes to your health and how your body's feeling that's because it's out of alignment with the type of person that you ultimately want to become. So if something feels like a drag, and if it feels like you're having to drag your legs through mud and amp yourself up, that's because it's not on the path that you envision yourself going on. And that's why it feels tough, and that's why you're not enjoying it at the time, because you don't see yourself as the type of person to do that. Now, there are gonna be times when things are tough for a short period of time, but you need to take a lesson from it rather than suffering through it. Or there will be things where you need to suffer through it for a little bit, but if it's prolonged, then that's that tells me that you're not on the track that you should be on. And so there are many, many different ways to get to the outcome that you wanna to get to. Always remember that and realize that you need to adapt as your business changes and grows. So I would love to know from you what is one big goal that you've had that you've ended up actually going in a complete other direction from. Be super cool to hear it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Next video is going to be about the before versus the now of what I was doing in my business before that was slowing me down versus now and how I'm growing and scaling. So I'll see you in the next video. Hit subscribe.